The Thorough Analysis of the Origin of Species, Lesson 11. Charles Darwin says, The Creation. This is the first half of Chapter 2, Variation under Nature. If the fact that organic beings vary in a state of nature is examined only in the species raised by human beings, it is unilateral and not universal. This is the contentus of chapter 2 to turn away our eyes to the wild. Charles Darwin is explaining the definition of the term species as follows. No one definition has satisfied all naturalists, yet every naturalist knows vaguely what he means when he speaks of a species, generally the term includes the unknown element of a distinct act of creation. The term definition stands for the definition of species and it was used as a relativism of varieties in the above. Our only means to verify the original form of organic being is a geological record. Charles Darwin regards the creature which was created by God and was not varied by natural selection as an original species. But there is no way to confirm species inhabited during or before the Archaeozoic or Proterozoic era because hunting for fossil remains are possible only since the time of Cambrian period of Paleozoic era. It is clear that species varies and the demarcation line of the variation exists, but it is impossible to recognize the diverging point of variation. Because fossils are confined to after the Paleozoic, it is impossible for us to ascertain the original species forever. In other words, following up tenaciously to the last of family tree, we could find the original forms which are results of the creation. But Charles Darwin says, there is no alternative to identify them. The previous paragraph shows that he draws a conclusion from the premise that the beginning of the organism is the creation. Especially, he changed a distinct act of creation in the reference one into a distinct act of creation in the reference two. The pregnant meanings of the former and the latter are different, and I and you cannot speculate the reason why he proofread it. However, it is not important whether it is distinct or distant, only it is important that Charles Darwin affirmed the creation. Many years ago, when comparing and seeing other compares, the birds from the closely neighboring islands of the Galapagos archipelago, one with another, and with those from the American mainland, I was much struck how entirely vague and arbitrary is the distinction between species and varieties. An individual is ranked by some authors as a species and is ranked by other botanical authorities as a variety. A German author made more than a dozen species out of forms which are almost universally considered by other botanists to be varieties. Because the variation, that is to say the change of organisms, is so slight and graduated, 
the only guide to follow in order to determine which of them shall be considered as species and as varieties. Is the opinion of naturalists having sound judgment and wide experience? Hence, the judgment cannot help being subjective and arbitrary in determining whether a form should be ranked as a species or a variety. And when the same identical form is met with in two distant countries, or in two geological formations, they believe that two distinct species are hidden under the same dress. The term species thus comes to be a mere useless abstraction, implying and assuming a separate act of creation. Charles Darwin is just on the point of saying that species have been created at one point of the Earth's surface and have spread from one parent source. But evolutionists without the concept of propagation say that species of the same genus were inhabiting the most distant quarters of the world is a proof that organisms had been created separately at various points from time to time. Of course, different geological stratum means different time, and the fact that the same species are found in the different stratum means they are inhabiting during different ages. This may be the very proof of the separate act that the evolutionists assert, but Charles Darwin says definitely it is a mere useless abstraction. It should be added that Du Candol no longer believes that species are immutable creations, but concludes that the derivative theory is the most natural one and the most accordant with the known facts in paleontology, geographical botany, and geology of anatomical structure and classification. There had been a lot of naturalists to believe that species are not immutable creations before Charles Darwin, but the belief that organisms created by God do not vary absolutely was dominant in those days. He maintains the reality is conformable with the factors derived by scientists. Chapter 2 is so long that the rest should be continued in the next. I wish you click subscribe button. Shalom. Thank you.